Hello and welcome to Trading Day. It is deadline day eve. The trade period will conclude tomorrow night at 7.30. We'll bring you all the action from 7 with our expert panel to go through all the deals for each and every club. As we introduce our panel, the 300 gamer from the Western Bulldogs, Brad Johnson. Welcome, DDE. Johnny. DDE. Deadline day <laughs> eve. It's massive. Good and up, the four-timer in Jordan Lewis. Welcome, hey, Jordan. I'm looking forward to this because Wreck-It Ralph over here has been wearing <laughs> a phone on each ear like Beats. He's mm -hmm. just had them up with all the trade news for Day 7. What do you got, John? Well, I've been working hard because that's not sugar-coated. It hasn't been a massive day for trades. But what it does do is add some real competitive tension tomorrow for that trade deadline at 7.30. So the Bobby Hill deal, that is the late developing story. It was uh, on again, it was off again, now it's on again. <laughs> now, I've spoken to Andrew McDougall, who is his manager today, and he tells me that Essendon, which it seemed we're only going to offer a late pick, 40s and 50s, have now tabled an offer to GWS that involves Essendon's future second round pick. There might be some um, picks at the edges there, but that would seem a fair trade. We'll go into that in a second. Let's go through the pending deals and how they potentially could get done or what happens if they fall over. We start with Jordan Dawson. That deal is simple. Adelaide is offering Melbourne's future first rounder at about 14 to 18 next year. They can only, they can get Dawson in the pre-season draft. They are adamant that is their final offer. It will not be improved upon. Sydney could have accepted pick 17 and some sweeteners uh, early Earlier on in the trade period, so do Sydney swallow their pride, accept the future first. Guys, who loses if this deal falls over? I think, I think the Swans. In, in some way, well, it's, it's quite easy to say then because they get nothing if, he, if they allow him to walk through to the, the pre-season draft. A player that is elite to above average in his skill level and he's, he could walk, you'd want something for that at least, I think. How does the economic, um, I suppose, scenario work if he does go through to the pre-season draft? How does that work? So he's on, a, I think it's a four-year deal at about six fifty. So they would put um, more than a million dollars in his first year of his cap. So clearly Collingwood, which is a club ahead, wouldn't be interested in that. North Melbourne, you would think, would be unlikely to. They've clearly got the cap space there. Mm. Uh, and I think Gold Coast is the other club who haven't got cap space. So, look. So Adelaide, Adelaide nominate that figure. Yeah. So then... It, and it's official and it is no, registered no, with the AFL yeah. and it's certainly what happened with Jackson Haley and also Jack Martin. So, look, you know, Gold Coast um, were, were able to hold their digs on the Jack Martin deal. They could have got a future second rounder. And the players, they said uh, afterwards, we really love the fact that you held firm. But I don't think this is a situation with Jordan Dawson. Mm -hmm. I think, you you know, you get that first rounder and you do stuff with it for Peter Adams later on. Yeah, you, you, you take it. I, I mean, you do you do try and bide your time to see if they <laughs> offer up anything else. Of course you else. do. And you, would, you would expect that deal to go through tomorrow. And if you, I mean, if you're looking at and in, in your Sydney, the Blakey move to halfback yep. nearly compensates for, for Dawson leaving. Golden wing halfback. So they've got some really good ball users that can just take the role of what Jordan Dawson was able to provide this year. So on Jordan Clark, Geelong is resolute. We want pick 19 or we want pick 22 and a future third rounder. Now why does Fremantle, uh, why are they so keen to kick 19 rather than 22? 19 is the first pick in the second round. On the second day of the draft night, clubs have had a whole day to think about which player they want. Mm. So Freo might be able to trade that pick slightly later, 23-24, get the same player and boost their draft stocks for next year, having traded out most of those picks. Geelong is holding the line. If it is not one of those two deals, Clark plays again with us next year. Who loses more if this deal falls over? Oh, look, I, I really like Jordan Clark yeah. as, a, as a player. I really do. And I think he'll be a huge asset to Frio if he, if he gets there. I'm, I'm not looking at Dawson or Clark, or we'll get to, to Bobby Hill in terms of that possible future second round going. I'm not, don't sit there going, well, that's not enough. I think they're actually spot on for what they're worth, especially what Jordan Clark is worth as a player, where he was drafted and what Geelong have done with his development. I know he didn't play, but also what they can get back for that, I think is pretty good. What do you think, Jordan? Yeah, I, I, looking at that, I'm a little bit like like you. I, once again, I think you you bide your time a little bit and you see what's what's offered up. I mean, if if they really rated Jordan Clark, I suppose he would have played a lot more football than, than he has, and then pick 22 in a future third round up. For me, that's fair enough as well. And that comes down to the, the scenario now with Geelong and getting their coaching elements together because, you know, a new, a new assistant coach could fall in love with Jordan Clark and he plays every round. Mm -hmm. So there, there's the elements that, that come into a play a little bit in terms of the discussions that they'd be having at the moment behind the scenes. Dude, it's a good draft hand though, isn't it? Fremantle. When you look at that, I mean, mm. they did give up pick mm. 22, they yeah. get Clark in, then you've got still oh, three nice. first rounders. And, and let's face it, Fremantle, um, uh, he's never been desperate to get back home. It's just that he wants to play senior mm. football. So you're right. So you think, okay, what's the point of him staying there? But Geelong are in a, a window where they potentially want to play some kids, which is why it's just so, so uh, delicately balanced. Now, the Bobby Hill deal. So the AFL version of 18 Love Triangle, Bobby Hill smitten with Essendon, 
Collingwood wants him, but that love is unrequited. GWS says, we want you back, baby. So <laughs> this morning, uh, Jason McCartney, the GWS football boss, said the deal was highly unlikely. So now, as I say, McDougall says, future second rounder is on the table. I can't tell you what the back end picks are, but a pick 24 who um, has high end talent, you're giving up maybe pick 25 to 30. You know, is that the kind of deal Jennifer says, no, no, because we haven't got enough small forwards on our list? Jordy, is he the type of player you can see becoming an above-average player? At the moment, where he sits young in his career, we understand all that. It's below average in terms of his output week in, week out, although they've got games into him. Can you see him jumping two, two levels to go to an above-average player in the next probably three years? Well, the question, Mark, is, is always about what, what the player himself wants. So, so you would think... The Giants know him intimately, so they understand where he wants to get to and, and how much he wants to actually work on his game. So maybe that's why they're reluctant to give him away, because he does... I think he's got potential to go into the midfield and, and you know, improve that endurance base and be really silky. They've got a lot of players around there who are good inside ball hunters, but he could play inside mid or, or even on the wing. Um, but all these deals are... Are funny because if a player signals that he wants to leave, you've got to really convince him to stay. And that, that's always hard. And he's brought out the Bengals. We want you back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to entice him. But so if you're GWS too, you know, potentially you get that deal done, it's uh, pick 25, you go to the draft next year and you bring in a Jack Loney or a Ben Guevara or a Michael Gibbons. I understand that they're not superstar players, but, you know, you feel a need there and you, and you don't get a player in who... I would imagine if he plays there next year, would not be happy and then gets unfit, and, and that's not a great but scenario. I, but I think, he, I, think he, I think he would be happy. I know, I know he wants to, he's requested a trade, but if it doesn't work out, I think he'd be OK, because Leon Cameron's got him in his starting 22 yep. at the moment. So he's got first, first tab on that, regardless of what happens now. He comes back to GWS. It's still his. It's still someone else's to jump over the top and push him out of this uh, GWS team. I, I so think, I think they can quite easily give him first crack back at it again, and he could actually go quite well. There are certain players that if they signal their intent to leave and you know the player, you know what he's like, <laughs> and you know that if he was to come back into the fold, he would be bitter and, and twisted and, and disappointed, well, then you let him go. They've obviously known this, this Bobby Hill for a long period of time, like the Josh Dunkley. Yeah. You know, he, he signals his intent to leave. Clearly, uh, you know, good values, good guy, all that sort of stuff, so you welcome them back. Well, it's frightening if he does get to Essendon in that forward line. So, as we look at it now, the ruck merry-go-round, I wanted to chuck John, John Ironmonger into this. <laughs> we've got Lynch, Laddam, Segler and Fort. Now, this is almost comical, the way this is going around, Ralphie. Yeah, I still think Peter Laddams gets from Port Adelaide to Sydney. So, pick 31 is what Sydney's, um, you know, early indication is that that's fair. Port Adelaide is throwing up saying, OK, what if you give us pick 31 and then we swap our pick 16, which is their first rounder, with Sydney's pick 12. So that improves their fourth round of four spots. I think, I think 31 just gets it done in the end. Geelong feels they are currently losing in the three-way deal for Darcy Fort to Geelong, John Segler to the Cats, Max Lynch to Hawthorne. But the talks are continuing, so I think that's the, that still gets done in the end. I think Laddams is, is just a, a really handy backup at Sydney. But if you're Geelong, I think you've got to get Segler over the line. I, mean, I think he starts in the round one centre square at that GMHBA Stadium. Yeah, I think so. He's back end of the, of the season when he was the number one ruckman. I feel like he plays better when he, when he is the man and, and not sharing the role with, with he and McAvoy. He, he needs that continuity in the middle of the ground. I, I think he's a really good pick-up. He's, he's got aerial prowess around the ground, the way Geelong play. They like mm. to... They like to play that skinny side and quite often they, they bring their taller forwards up the ground. Well, then they could potentially leave them a bit deeper, a little bit more dangerous than Segler be that conduit. Um, and, and, and having known Segler, he, he's, a, he's a good culture person as well. Mm. Fabric. Yeah. Yeah, but that depends on the Darcy Ford scenario, I think, with Geelong. Otherwise, they're too top-heavy on, on their list. They're starting to, 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 get, that, yeah, to yeah. get that way a little bit. Where's Segler at with the Bulldogs? Is there any more talk around that? Ralphie, with the no. talk around them no, being a ruckman. Oh, and okay. hasn't, hasn't Max Lynch all of a sudden become <laughs> a superstar? He's just he's been done. thrown in. Yeah, all of a sudden, his profile has gone, gone through the roof. There is a bit of potential with Max Lynch, no question whatsoever. Saw him compete quite well. It was only a practice game against <laughs> Melbourne mm. uh, at, uh, at Gosh's Paddock. But he actually did compete well against Max Gorn. You can see some, some upside to the way that he, that he can play his football into the future. As, as Segler got lots of miles on the clock, he's only 30, but you know people say, oh, he's banged up. You, you hear things. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably a two to three year proposition. You know, left in his left in his career, his understanding of that, and and if you're Geelong, you, you're clearly thinking you're still in that little window to try and to try and get a premiership with the other ageing stars you've got around him. So. For me, I look at that one and, and it's a perfect fit. They need a Ruckman. They need a Ruckman with experience and age and, and all the rest that goes with it. It's a perfect fit. No, no talk this year around Todd Goldstein at all in terms of this Ruck no. combination. Where he's at with North Melbourne. What he could do for two years with a, with a Bulldogs or with a Geelong that could possibly get them you know, that next step into winning a flag. He's a fabric player. Absolutely determined to finish his career at North Melbourne. Fair enough. Good on him. And the one with Segler, like you just said, then in terms of banged up in his body, I mean, he's been through the Hawthorne physio system. Silk was only going to get two years and played 20. Yeah. So I think his body's going to hold up and he's going to be a good fit for Geelong. Speaking of Hawthorne, mm -hmm. Ralphie, uh, every time I'm on the show, you've been bashing me from left, <laughs> right now in terms of Sam's ringing coaches. Where are they at right now? So their grand plan has officially collapsed right now. But the really strong positive out of it is that Sam Mitchell has not damaged his relationships with those senior players. And we talk of Wingard, Mitchell, O'Meara and Gunston. It's not just PR fluff from the club. You know, I truly believe, having made enough calls, that those players were involved in those conversations. They were forewarned. As soon as Wingard was told of that GWS offer, he knocked it back straight away. The trade was dead. They didn't try and harangue him on it. Jordan, you know, we hate to go back to the well, but you've been in this situation, you've had the conversations with Alistair Clarkson. Take us through what the language is, and, and if you decided to go back, what would that have been like? Um, well, my, my specific conversation with, with Alistair, and I would imagine the conversation with these boys would potentially be the same, it is, you are in our best 22. We can't guarantee you that you'll play every single game next year. It is about developing younger kids, so if you unfortunately fit into the same position as as a young kid coming through that that we need to give exposure to because our plan in in three to five years is to make this player a 50 to 100 game player well unfortunately you'll play some some vfl football how old were you we, with it when these discussions happened uh what was i 30 okay yeah yeah so we've seen it with i mean nathan jones this year um you know other clubs that that, that go to their players and say hey we'd love to have you around clearly experience all that type of stuff but you might not be a 22-game player. Oh, you, might, you might be mm. 10 to 15, help the younger kids develop, but it's always hard. I always found it hard. Once that initial conversation was happening and you read everything, you heard the conversations were happening about you, one club doesn't necessarily... They're happy to give you up. It is so hard. There's always that little bit inside you that knows there's doubt around the football club. Ralphie, I understand what you said there around um, Mitchell and the relationship with the senior player. I still think he's going to have a lot to tidy up here because if, if, during the, if early in the season a younger player is getting a game in front of one of these older type uh, players that, have, that were put on the trade table, the, the locker room and all these aspects that we don't sort of talk about too much, the dynamic starts to shift a little bit. Yep. And I, I think there's a lot more that, that Sam will need to do to give these senior players a sense of belonging back into his system well, and make them believe to play within his system. Oh, and he's got a lot to worry about in terms of first-year coach. He's got to get them playing well to start. And then you've got to add all these layers on all of a sudden. He's got a lot to tidy up before um, you know this preseason begins. And if you know Sam Mitchell, very strong in terms of his views and the way he goes about it. But when Clarko would ex exit you out of the football club, he'd bring you around the six-pack and just <laughs> ease you down lightly. <laughs> Jordan, how did, he, Mount Franklin? How, did he, how, did he, how did he exit you? Uh, no, no six-pack. It was 9.30 in the morning. I probably would have needed a six-pack post that. But no, just the oversized jeans and the, uh, the horrible shirt that he wore. <laughs> <laughs> quite, frequently, quite frequently. We have a look at the leadership group from, from 2021. So James Warple's the young the younger player that's uh, in, in that mix. Can you see things changing from that front then? If Sam Mitchell wants the younger players to drive this team going forward and he's possibly going to give them first opportunity, do you see any players from there that possibly will not be part of that? Well, I think the, the ones... I mean, they're all midfielders, aren't they? So, so Warple is that, that new sort of up-and-coming midfield, plays, plays very similar to, to Tom Mitchell. Gunston, you'd, you'd like to see back on the park. They're clearly a better side with him. But I think a lot of their, their younger players, that the players that sort of they're holding their hope on are, are defenders. There's a lot of defenders. So if you, if you rejig that leadership group, I would imagine Sicily is in there next year. Will mm. Day's got leader, leadership potential. Yep. Dan Gray Brass has got leadership potential. So... Um, if they haven't been able to move these players on right now, in the next one to two to three years, there'll be significant change. 
So plan A has failed for Sam Mitchell. So what's plan B? I just keep thinking about Paul Roos who says, five year rebuilds, who gives us stuff about him? You just get better every year and every year and you see where it takes you. I'll show you Hawthorne's best 22 and it's really impressive. The best, uh, it's got absolute stars on every line Now potentially it needs a bit more depth. You bring back Gunston and Sicily. So could he back himself to win a flag in the next few years like Luke Beveridge in 2016? You keep the list, you add the elite talent, maybe you get a free agent in the next 24 months. So the Dogs had high draft picks, McRae, Bontepelli, Stringer. They had Rookies, five of them, Stringer, um, Picken, Boyd, Dale Morris, Dalhouse, jo Jason Johannesson, Fletcher Roberts was a pre-season pick. So, look, bottoming, bottoming out, we just saw what happened with Melbourne. It is a way to win a premiership. There are so many different ways you can win a premiership, and mm. I think we understood what he was trying to do, but m maybe you just pivot if you're Sam Mitchell. That back line, if you look at that right now, in terms of your re redeveloping yeah. your, your list, that's where you want to start. I mean, that's, that's going to be your foundation. So... Mm. You're right, getting the senior players back and, and playing their role. I think we're, we're a bit grown up now. We're, we're, we're past the loyalty stage in football and we're free agency. Like, we're at a stage right now where it's, you know, you put, try and put the club first as a coach, but the individuals also do it as well. Yeah, definitely. The only one in that, in that back half, Denver Granger, Barras, can't play on the bigs, Tom Hawkins and the kings of the world, Mackay. Yep. So, therefore... So, that, Sam that, Frost that, gets that, another... Yeah, another that, that's, the element, that's the element that they'll probably need to tidy up in that. So, that probably says they're still probably a couple of years away from just jigging what they need to do to get the right players into the positions to support the young talent that we see on the screen. I think the first five to, to six games at the start of the season... Um, will play a pivotal role in terms of, of what happens in the, in the back end. If, if they're winning and everything is going well, mm. the front half of the season, well, all those conversations over the pre-season have forgotten. If there starts to be cracks, well, they'll rear its head again. Mm. We've already spoken about Geelong. Tyson Stengel, is he any closer to being a cat, Ralphie? So, so why is he not officially a cat? Mm. Uh, only because he needs to be delisted at the end of October by, um, uh, by Adelaide. Uh, it's the same sort of situation there as we've seen with other players, including Luke Dunstan. So he will play at Geelong next year. 44 goals in the SA. NFL uh, last year, or this year rather, including their premiership. Um, Jono, what do you think? How does he slot into the front six? And maybe even give us what you think will be the round one starting six for Geelong. Yeah, well, when, when you look at it, normally when you get a, a new player in, he, he generally gets first crack at it from the uh, from the coach. So all of a sudden that puts pressure on Dalhouse, Higgins and probably Myers, who were, who were battling for that same spot that, that Stengel will play. So I think when you look at their, their six, I think you go Radigalia and Hawkins and then possibly Stengel in that, in that role there to get, to get a start. Then Close, who improved this year as a player, Cameron's a star. And I love Zach Tui as a, as a half forward because he's the, he's the one who can link between the wing and half forward. He did it really well this year and we know he can kick goals from 55 on, on the run. So that's why I like Zach Tui in that role who can, who can fluctuate between, between the wings. So Gary Rowan's probably the one that steps onto the bench potentially to start games. Mm -hmm. We know if they change their ball movement and go a bit quicker, that'll suit a Gary Rowan because you'll get more one-on-ones, real decent one-on-ones inside forward 50, as will Cameron. And we know how Hawkins um, competes in that scenario as well. But they, they need to get this right for Stengel in particular. All the small that they choose out, outside of close because they can't get too high up the ground. They need to be able to have that representation inside forward 50 to be able to lock that ball in, create the pressure mm. that is required. And I'm not sure whether... Well, we'll wait and see whether Stengel brings all elements to, to the game. I watched all of his uh, 44 goals with Champion Data today. And so he was amazing at the small, the fall of the ball, the chaos ball coming in. But he was always the deepest forward. And at times there, because he's so quick and so agile, he actually got a lot of marks inside 50. I think uh, 3.3 per good game. He's good in the air. Yeah, yep. and so, so he, he can complement, you know, that, that pure crumbing role. So... I just think he's a great acquisition for absolutely nothing. All right, after the break, Jordan Lewis's favourite segment, Have a Shot. We'll go through every <laughs> single club. But as we go to the break, Essendon celebrate the 150th year in 2022. And the Bombers' stories of a great club is a great doco coming soon to Fox Footy. AFL National Draft, November 24 and 25. Every young man's path to primetime live and exclusive on Fox Footy. Time to have a shot. How it works, 30 seconds. If you want to have a shot at a club, we'll go through every single club. If you don't, you say play on. It's that simple. You only get 30 seconds. Ralphie, we're going to start with Melbourne. Right, uh, added Luke Dunstan. Christian Petraka back at the club doing beach weights. Still thrilled. <laughs> beach <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Tommy Morris told us nine days after the Premiership he was back and doing swimming and beach weights. What? And I just, sort just of... working on the bison <laughs> That's what I would have thought. So anyway, but uh, apologies, Christian. You're only the best player in the game. I hate um, mirror, Petrarca. Still thrilled that uh, none of their rivals have got better. Play on from me. Play on as well. Next year. OK, we've we'll only got five minutes. Let's go. Port yes. Adelaide. Uh, secured Finlayson have offered up Laddams but want a first rounder involved. Midfield improvement to come from within. Uh, play on. Play on. Leaving that one. Geelong. Should do a deal on Jordan Clark. Stengel is locked in. We'll eventually get John Segler after Darcy Fort goes to Brisbane. 
Play on. <laughs> Play on. You know how this segment <laughs> yeah, works. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. And we're going to get it. Brisbane. Uh, very <laughs> cranky to be accused of doing nothing given their cap issues. Darcy Fort will get there as they ruck forward back up for the big O. Play on. OK. Play on. We're just going to change the segment to play, play on. on. <laughs> OK, play on. Western Bulldogs. Tim O'Brien is the defensive cover. Mitch Wallace stays, signed Jordan Sweet, so they won't go for another Ruckman, despite all their issues in the third quarter in the grand final. Play on. Play on. Terrific chat, boys. This is good. This is right it's a great on. game, isn't it? We're warming this, up. But this is the way we want the game played. This play. is like Just the period. All it. Yeah, play flurry on. at the end. Sydney need to decide if they would accept Melbourne's future first rounder for Jordan Clark. Would offer pick 31 for Adams, but Port Adelaide right now wants more. I have a shot. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, I just think... It's inevitable that they will they will accept this deal. I think if you're looking at a player that, that leaves the club, what have you got in 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 sort of the reserves that can a player that can can step right up? And for me, the Blakey move to half back this year has just cemented himself. He, he provides that run, that carry, that aggressive type of nature that, that Dawson provided also. And then you throw in Goulden, who'll be that that wing slash high half back two really beautiful ball users um, that can really compensate for the for the Dawson move and a future first rounder. That that is. That's a good pick for a player that, that came on and, and he's been a good player this year, but I think they'll be fine without him. I think we need to start looking at the Sydney Swans and going, OK, who is the next superstar for the Swans? Because Buddy's coming towards the end. They have traditionally got a stadium filler on their list. Who is the next one do you think the Sydney Swans will be targeting Ooh. for next year, starting to have some conversations, just bubbling underneath? Well, it's usually a forward, isn't it, when you, when you mention yes. those names? It traditionally but, is a forward. Ben but King. Uh, Oh, oh, see, that's what I like now because mm. that becomes a good conversation for the for the Sydney Swans. Is it a if Petrarca wins two? Is it do they go hard there? The girl, he's out of contract. Yeah. He's a free agent. Oh, yeah. And you're his opponent on. You went for a minute <laughs> and you didn't say. <laughs> All right, GWS. Uh, the Rory Lobb trade is dead in the ditch. Uh, playing hardball on Bobby Hill, but as we told you before, that might be back on again. Then they have 24 hours to maybe find a replacement. Po play on. <laughs> play on. <laughs> Essendon. Uh, Added Jake Kelly, can on Bobby Hill, but not at any price. Uh, so, as we said, we've talked about that potential trade equation. If Ralphie's talking quick, we're out of time. So, play on for that. <laughs> play on as well. West Coast. Uh, added Sam Petrescu, Seaton. That's about it. Yep, play on. Play on. St Kilda. Uh, want Tristan Zeri, but not with a future... Oh, sorry, with a second rounder. Fair enough, too. Then back to the draft with pick nine. Play on. Yep, play on as Three well. Three men on. Like this uh, trying to hold pick 19 instead of 22 and a third, third, uh, future third rounder for Jordan Clark. Just a sneaking suspicion there might be a little trade day surprise. They might have a big fish they're throwing around. OK, okay. Play, play on. on. Richmond. Uh, Robbie Tarrant arrives, but the Tigers don't have the cap space or the inclination to add star midfielders. So in Dusty we trust, even if it is as a slimmed down version as we heard today. Play on. Play on for the Tigers. You haven't had a go yet. It's coming. OK. <laughs> I, I can see play on all on his sheet here. Come. Icon Park becomes an excuse-free zone next year. They've got the coach they wanted. They've got the CEO they wanted. Ooh. Hewitt Young and Chera all in. Uh, have I like a go. That. I like that. Over, I, I, over to you, boys. Yeah. Have I, a go. Let's have, yeah. a, have, have a, a shot. shot. <laughs> for, me, for me, this side, we always speak about the side, that, the side that jumps up. There was four sides last year that jumped up from the bottom eight to the top eight. In Cherry, Young, Hewitt. Three players that will play in their best 22. You look at their spine, Wiedering, Jones, Walsh, Kerno, Mackay, and then all the other players that play around him. For me, mm. it's the side that jumps up next year and, and can be a real threat. Sydney or Carlton finish higher? Uh, I think Sydney will finish higher, but I think Carlton will play finals. Mm. Hawthorne. Uh, Tom Mitchell was always staying. Chad Wingard ain't leaving. Port Adelaide's Jagger O'Meara interest lasted five minutes, so they go back to the draft 5 21 24. Maybe try and get those last two picks into a top 15 selection. Play on. Play on. You haven't got many left. Adelaide uh, yeah. have offered Melbourne's future first for Jordan Dawson. Would get him past the Ruse, Pies, and Gold Coast in the preseason, so it's a take it or leave it scenario for Sydney. Play on. Play on. Uh, Gold Coast. Work was done <laughs> 10 days ago when Marbia Chook walked in on a $425,000 a season deal. Only have pick three in the national draft ahead of a season where everything needs to go right, especially with Alistair Clarkson overseas on a fact-finding mission. And Nathan Buckley, of course, uh, Stewie Jew, got to play finals. Play on. Have a shot. Oh, here oh, he is. Hey. There we go. Wow. I think the strategy completely has to change here from a, a Gold Coast Suns point of view. If I was Gold Coast and with what Hawthorne were were offering up as potential trades, I would have given up my picks this year, my pick this year. Pick three. I, I would have given up futures next year in terms of the top futures, possibly even if you work it out where they might finish, four up to 22, 38 potentially, with what they're going to get as um, uh, from the pies as well, 23, 44, 25 from Frio. So they've got enough picks for next year as well. I think they need to to keep the likes of Lacocious and Rankin and, and Raul and Anderson and King in particular. Mm -hmm. 
they could have gone a totally different strategy instead of building up players for them to leave and go win premierships elsewhere, which I think, uh, which is a, a culture that needs to change completely at this club. They needed to go after current stars, Who? and they had a chance. The Hawthorne players: Segler, Mitchell, Wingard, and Gunston. Okay, we've got Collingwood, North Melbourne. Are we playing on? Are we, are we playing on? On both clubs. Play yes. on. Outstanding work tonight. Uh, the votes, Ralph one, uh, <laughs> Lewis, Lewis two fine. and Dixon three. Unlucky, Jono. <laughs> um, join us tomorrow night. The deadline is 7.30, but all the action brought to you here on Fox Footy from 7pm. All the deals, we'll go through every single club exclusively here on Fox Footy.